Hey guys, and welcome to the RevitKid.com. Today, what I'm going to show you is Revisto, and that is a third-party visualization platform for Revit. So I wanted to really just sort of go through the motions of using Revisto and showing you how easy it is and how um, how much it likes to talk to Revit and how easily it pulls custom materials through, and also maybe some of the downfalls of using the software. So what I have here is a model I've created. If I zoom around, this is in Revit 2014. I can zoom in. This is a realistic mode. You can see there's a lot of different materials. There's a lot of different funky shapes. So this is a good one to use. Um, I also like to notice that these are custom materials. So if I was to zoom in here, you can see the wood plank. That is a custom rendered material that I created. Um, if I go to my edit type and go to my siding wood, uh, wood panel vertical, uh, you would see that this is a, a custom a custom JPEG image. So I wanted to show you how that can link to Revisto, which is nice because a lot of programs don't bring in different things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export it to Revisto because I've already got the materials applied, my Revit thing is all set up, my Revit model is all set up and it's ready to go. So I'm going to go to add-ins, I'm going to click export to Revisto, I'm going to it, give it a name, house1. Now I want to make a new project and I'm going to keep everything export, export, and run Revisto. So now what it's going to do is it's going to export the model, uh, export, export the FBX, and bring it into Revisto. So now that the model is done exporting, it's, it's launching Revisto editor, and you're going to see the model right inside of it. So here you go, everything's loading. If I zoom out, you see we've got our model. So I'm holding right click, and I'm moving around with the WASD keys. If you're a gamer, you're familiar with those. If not, WSAD is up, down, back, forward, or you could use the arrow keys. Um, if you'll notice right away, we've got some cool environment, and you know, we got some nice sky, whatever, uh, but we don't have our materials. So what we have to do is we have to get our materials. So if you see here, if I go to the, the top toolbar, we've got get materials, calculate shadows, sync with cloud, use materials library and then auto update material library. What we want to do is we want to get materials. This, this is so that we link to Revit and we pull the materials through. So I'm going to pause it for a second while it gets the materials. Okay, so I'm back and you can see my Revit materials have come through. And if I zoom around you can see all the different materials, even the custom materials are actually in the model, which is pretty cool. So let me continue zooming around, you can see it there. So now the nice thing about Revisto is once you export the model, it's pretty easy to edit different things. So if I wanted to edit this material, I can select it, and it pops up with the material settings. And now in here, I can actually change the bump map, the diffuse map, the transparency of it, or even the scale of it, which is pretty sweet. I can also do things like apply completely different materials to it. So if I was to select, let's say this floor, I can give it a change material, so I can actually change it to a material within the model or I can change it to a material that's not in the model and create my own material. Now I want to talk about a couple other settings up on the toolbar here. Calculate Shadows is going to take the lighting that you set and it's going to calculate shadows and ambient occlusion based on that lighting. And what I mean by lighting is if you go under settings or tools and sun settings you can set the sun in different locations or you can calculate the lights. So if I go to tool and lights you can calculate or you can turn on different lights and you can calculate them using the tools quality light map. So now under here you're actually going to build a light map which renders to the scene and once it's rendered you don't have to worry about it ever again. So I'm going to bake the lights real quick. So I'm going to click build light map. I'm going to leave it to default so you can tweak them if you want. Actually if you hold if you hold your mouse over the the slider, you can see there's a uh, there's a little tooltip showing what each one does. So this remove splotching is found in some scenes, blah, 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 blah. So that's kind of a nice tip. I'm going to leave it default. I'm going to click Build Light Maps, and I'll be right back. So now I'm back. The lighting was co uh, computed. So if I zoom in a little, you can start to see a little bit of the ambient occlusion and different shadows here and there, which is nice. Uh, the second thing you can do is you can calculate the shadows now that your lighting set up. The other thing I would also mention is that you want to set your sun settings. Um, one thing that sort of bothers me, and it was a little annoying when using the software, is if you set these settings up, like let's say you set a panorama, let's say I wanted this panorama, and click set lighting. So I, I chose an image file, and you can see I've got this panorama, which looks kind of cool. Um, every time you re-export from Revit, 
for some reason the sun settings defaults. I'm not sure if that's a bug or if that's just the way it's designed, but um, if you do start setting up different uh, sun settings, just be aware that if you re-export from Revit, if you change the model and re-export from Revit, uh, your sun settings will default. So now quickly I'm going to calculate the shadows and I'll be right back. So I'm back and the shadows are calculated. You can see the scene got a little bit darker, but there are more there is more depth to the scene. So there's there's much more shadows going on uh within each each of the little cubes and you know, all the spaces if I zoom around it. And it sort of adds a little bit more realism. So now now that we've got everything set, let's say this is the scene that we want to use. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch it in the viewer. And within the viewer, you can do a lot of nice things as far as visualization is concerned. You can record walkthroughs, you can um, take screenshots, you can simply live uh, move, move around the model in, in a live atmosphere, as well as uh, you can comment on pieces of the model and have it shared through the cloud so people can see it. So I'm just going to launch the Revisto viewer. So if I click here, it says the project contains blah, blah, blah. I didn't save anything, so I'll save stuff and now the viewer is going to be launched and now when you launch the viewer you have different settings so you could change the resolution you could change the graphic quality and you could change if it's windowed I'm just going to leave it as is because I know what my settings were it's going to be 1920 by 1080 so it's the full screen I'm going to click play now it might take a couple seconds but what it's doing is it's taking that that model and it's launching it in basically a video game environment so this is the Revisto viewer so now we're in the environment and you can see the scene looks a little bit different, not too different, but a little bit different. It's a little more realistic, it's smoother, um, the polygons are smooth out a little. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the settings and sort of show you what the graphic settings can do. So right now, I have on glass reflections and tone mapping. So I'm going to show you what that does. Glass reflections is pretty, pretty obvious, but tone mapping is a big one. If I turn tone mapping off, you see how dark the scene gets? On, off, on, off. So that's one of the things that you want to keep on because otherwise the scenes can get very dark. And then different things like SSAO and HDR, those are actually going to add some darkness to the scene, especially HDR. But if you look closely around the edges, I'll point, you know, if you look around here, hopefully you can see it, you'll see it adds a little bit of ambient occlusion, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to leave that as is. You can see the scene is rendering pretty smoothly. If I was to pull around the back here. So right now I'm in fly mode. If I turn off these little angel wings, I'll drop down and I'll be walking around the scene. So now I'm walking around the scene. If you want to move a little faster, you hold shift. Now you can see I've gone inside and I can look around. So you can see the scene is actually a pretty nice looking rendering. It's got a lot done to it and there's stuff you can use. I didn't turn on the artificial lighting in here so it's a little bit dark, but you get a sense of, of what's going on. So now what I want to show you really quickly is, if I was to back up here, let's go around to the other side. You'll notice how it pulled in the panoramic that I set before. That's nice. So let's say if I was to look at this, this scene here. Now what I can do is, I can save a screenshot if I hit this little camera up here. Take a quick picture. It says screenshot is saved or I can actually render a walkthrough which is one of my favorite parts because it's very simple to do so if you hit the little video camera and then you hit the red button on the right hand side it's gonna start rendering a walkthrough and you can see on the top there's a countdown or a count up I guess and that's sort of showing you that you are recording a walkthrough so if I was to move around here look up look down look back whatever then I right click and then I left click to stop the recording it says your video has been saved okay so how do you get to it you hit the little folder here type in a password which hold on one second so now that the password is typed in I hit the folder and in my folder in my dialog here I have videos and I have pictures so you can see there this is the image that I took which is dark I know but I'm just showing you that you can take a quick image and you can download those images or the video if we go back hit the little video camera double click here 
you can see that we've actually, I'm just pressing play, we've rendered a walkthrough. And this walkthrough can be exported and used, which is pretty powerful, considering you can have a live walkthrough, you can have a rendered walkthrough, and it takes very little time to render every single scene. So if I back out of this, and I back out of this, and I go back to my scene, So now I'm back in my scene. Oops, I guess I'm not. Hold on a second. So now I'm back in my scene. I can continue doing different things. Um, what I mentioned before about comments is pretty cool. Um, because this has an iPad app as well as a web-based um, viewer, uh, multiple people can look at the file, multiple people can comment on the file, and click and find out information about it. So if you were to click different objects, you can see here it says exterior wood, pan it, wood panel finish, brown vertical, blah, blah, blah. So it tells information about the wall, the different types of things. You can also add a marker, which is kind of cool. So I can add a little marker in three dimensions. So let's say I hit it right here. And you can actually type in it. You can change the color of it. And you can add little markers with little comments explaining to other people or team members different things about the project. So it's a nice collaborative environment too. I just really like how easy it is, how quick it is, and how much it pulls through from Revit. Um, so there's much more. If you read the blog post, I go into a little bit of detail about the pros and cons. I hope this helps you a little bit understand to understand what Revisto is and maybe help you make a decision as to whether it's right for you.